Hello, welcome back to another Princess Connect video. My name is Lace and today we are going to be talking about our new limited summer characters that are coming out in probably about three days. We've got the lovely Summer Pekrin as well as the Summer Kokoro. So in this video, I will be taking you guys through their skill set, through kind of their attributes and stuff like that. And then I'll talk about like their actual usefulness and how they're actually used in practice. So I'm talking like arena or clan battle. With that being said, let's start off with Pekrin. Summer Pekrin, wow. Summer Pekrin is an attacker unit. So for everyone who's played so far, y'all know Pekrin as a really nice bulky tank. However, with the summer variant, she actually changes into more of like an attack damage, more like a Ninon uh, cleave kind of lady. So as you can see here, she is not available from like anywhere else, only by the limited gacha. If I pop over to the timeline, you'll be able to see that we have the banner for Pekrin, summer Pekrin over here. However, the next time that she is rerun, she is actually rerun over here one year later. When she is rerun, she will actually be in a joint banner with summer Kiara, which is a pretty Pretty cool banner to be honest. With that being said though, like that's a year's wait. So if you want Pekrin, you go get Pekrin now. Like I said guys, if there is any time to be rolling for waifus, it is now. It, it is like now. All right, that said, let's move on and let's have a look at her skill set, which is really nice. First, we have her UB, which is probably like the signature skill from her. And it's really what we're trying to abuse when we use Summer Pekrin. So for Summer Pekrin's UB, it's a very straightforward skill. It inflicts physical damage to all enemies in range. It doesn't state it here, but the range is 600 in front. As a unit in the front line, she's going to be hitting a lot of units like through to the midline and potentially the back. So this being a cleave attack kind of starts to tell you like, you know, where you could possibly see her being used. However, let's save that for the end and let's get through the rest of the skills. Next, we have the dessert time skill one, which is a simple physical attack buff, which is really nice. However, you do incur a 20% magic defense debuff. So, you know, that kind of is already telling you what kind of counters her. Remember guys, I'm not just reading this. Like I'm also trying to give you guys suggestions as to what to think. Magic defense debuff to a herself. She sits in the front line. I don't know, man. Something is screaming Ilya to me. But of course, there's going to be counters to the counters to the counters. So let's just leave it at that. So again, physical attack buff. So this physical attack buff is actually quite significant. I believe at like level 130, it's at about like 5k. And so when we get her, it's going to be about like 4k. And you can kind of work that out, right? 40 times the skill level plus one. So it's going to be like, let's say level 100. So that's going to be 4k. Yeah, 4k physical attack buff. For the next 12 seconds, that's pretty lit. But that's it for this skill. And let's move on to skill 2, which is Parasol Assault. So the skill 2 inflicts physical damage to all enemies in range. For this skill, the range seems to be 325, which is a little bit shorter than the UB. And it also seems to knock back for 200 range. And I, I don't know about you guys, but like there are some comps that are coming to my head that are like getting a little bit funky. We're starting to move into this kind of like movement disruption. I'm not going to call it a meta, but it's kind of like a niche. There is definitely team comps that you can build around like these kinds of skills. This knockback is just really big because it also knocks tanks back which is just so good for like a cleave comp. So as you can see, there can be a lot of synergies with Summer Pekrin. All right, let's move on. We've got the EX skill, which is just physical attack and then EX plus, which is more physical attack. Now here's what it gets interesting. So you see here, bond level bonus. What we have here is that Summer Pekrin is only going to get these three bond level bonuses. However, this is actually the first time we are going to have an alternative of an existing character. And what happens when we have alternatives is that the alternatives each get the bond level bonuses of the other alternatives. But what I'm trying to say is that when Summer Pekrin comes out, when she gets these bond level bonuses, she will also get all of the initial bond level bonuses. What this means is that this actually makes Summer Pekrin quite a bulky and beefy attacker. You can already see her entire skill set is like revolving around attack. However, if you also like add this into the mix, man, she is a force to be reckoned with. And then on top of that, you got the princess and you got the new years. It only gets better from here. And so you can see the characters with the most ults benefit like the most. It doesn't mean that they are the best, though some of them are like really, really freaking good. But now you see the importance of actually like raising the bond levels of the alternative characters. For Pekrin, it's pretty useful because whilst she is not that good, she is quite good. When she gets her six star, as she is one of the first units to get a six star, she is going to be really, really freaking good for a while. On top of that, when Princess Pekrin comes out, she is also going to be very good. They do eventually get a little bit like power crept, but like for the time period that they're in, like on top of these bond level bonuses, they're going to be like pretty monsters. I guess I mentioned this because there are other characters that have ults that are, I guess, just more impactful. For example, you're going to want every ult of like Kokoro and every ult for like Kiaru. And the reason is because Princess Kokoro is just really good and Summer Kiaru as well as New Year's Kiaru is exceptionally good. All right, with that being said, let's come back to the Summer Pekrin. This is the Summer Pekrin talk. All right, let's have a look at her attack pattern. And so we've got the buff straight into the knockback, which is really, really awesome because like this means that you start off the battle almost immediately like pushing all of the enemies back. And so everything that comes after, it's kind of already set up and you 
you've got like more units to cleave. Everybody is clumped up a little closer and you know, it's looking a little spicy for some AOE attacks. Honestly, I reckon that is such a good starter and like <laughs> cleave comps are just gonna be like so happy. So after that, we have the attack buff and we have like this kind of loop. Uh, it's okay. However, I do feel like most of the value in Summon Pekarin, aside from her massive UB, is actually in her skill too, which is obviously like the knockback. The knockback does take a little bit to come back, but I think that the fact that this knockback is like in the initial pattern, it's already providing so much value. I don't know about you guys, but like since Ilya has come out, there have been some comps which like finish the battles in like 30 seconds. A lot of anti-Ilya comps take advantage of killing Ilya in like the first like 10, 15 seconds. And so like we're going to start seeing a little bit more of that kind of like meta. All right, final thoughts on the attack pattern. The initial pattern is great. It's just setting up for a lot. However, the loot pattern is kind of like, it's okay. Like it's it's all right. It's not anything to write home about, but with that being said, let's move on to Summer Kokoro. And don't worry guys, I'll be revisiting Summer Pekrin with like a more PVP oriented guide. You guys can already tell, like she is a PVP unit. She's going to clump people up together and she's going to smack them real good. However, as you can see, she has AOE attacks and that is just not really effective in CB. She is not a unit that you're going to be wanting to use in clan battle. Although if you are like kind of more new to the game and she's all you have, she is, she's okay. Like you got to make do with what you have, right? But yeah, guys, Summer Pekrin Arena Guide definitely going to come out. It's going to be very similar to my Ilya guide. I'll show you guys like some cores and some like matchups and stuff like that. Okay, for real, I'm moving on to Summer Kokoro. Okay, let's go. We got Summer Kokoro here. Look at her. She's so cute. Moving on to her skills. So Summer Kokoro is a support. She stands in the midline and she's not too different from her like normal variant. If we come down over here, let's have a look at her skills. So her UB, she actually still recovers HP, but it's actually to the ally with the lowest HP. And this is kind of nice considering she doesn't do the tri slash that puts her out to the front, like takes like 4,000 damage and then comes back and then heals up. She instead this time, she stays in the midline and just heals people. However, unlike some of Pekrin, this is not really the star of her kit. The star of her kit and why she is so good for CB is because of this one. All we've got here is that she is actually going to reduce physical defense. Another physical defense debuffer. Let's freaking go. And this is only good things, right? Let's just say even at level 100, she's going to give 60 physical defense down. That's just super good. As well as providing like some level of sustain through her UB, like this just makes her like a really good character already. However, if you guys thought it couldn't get better, we go on to skill two and we've got naval support and it is just a straight physical attack buff, which is incredible. It's a little bit different from the original Kokoro because the original Kokoro actually gives you magic attack as well. However, like I said, guys, from the very, very start, we are going to be going into more specialized teams. It's going to be either physical teams or magic teams. This physical attack buff, let's say you're level 100. So that's 600 physical attack to all of your allies. There's only one thing to say about that. It's pretty lit. All right, next, next. And we've got medium increase to own magic defense. Okay, fair, like fair. Like I've said with all of my supports, I do value the survivability from my supports. For me, I really value the fact that supports just stay on the field and they just keep buffing up, right? Or like they keep debuffing the enemy. If they're too fragile and they die, then it's kind of like whatever. Very, very sad. This gives her magic defense. I'm, I'm indifferent about it. It's good, it's okay. All right, with that being said, let's come down and have a look at the bond level bonuses. So we are going to get the summer as well as the initial. We're going to be getting a whole lot of physical attack from the original Kokoro. Thank you, original Kokoro. Wave TP, which is kind of useless. However, add that onto the summer ones and we have a lot of physical attack. Physical attack on a physical unit. It is a support unit, but every bit of damage counts. All right, moving on. Let's have a look at this attack pattern. And this is just beauty. We've got an immediate defense down into an immediate attack buff. And then you just keep buffing her. <laughs> Kokoro just can't stop. At most, she has one auto attack in between every skill. Sometimes she even gets two skills before an auto attack. And both of her skills are just so incredibly useful that this is just, this is an awesome attack pattern. There is absolutely no wonder that she is a great CB unit. And look at this. She actually gets two skill twos off in succession. Her skill two is the increased ally physical attack. And just for you guys who don't know, these actually stack. So what that means, is for the overlap probably of about eight seconds she's going to be providing 1200 attack to everyone honestly that's pretty good okay guys i think i've emphasized how much i like summer Kokoro for cb if you guys can help it try to get her to at least three stars so she can get all of like the good stats and stuff as well as the bond level bonus i know it's only 30 physical attack but it's also like it's 30 physical attack all right so i've hopped on about how awesome summer Kokoro is at cb then what about arena unfortunately this version of Kokoro actually actually doesn't have a lot of the really arena-centric kind of attributes or skills. What I'm talking about is the original Kokoro has attack speed 
up as well as try slash and a UB on herself. The reason why these three are really good is because attack speed, it's already self-explanatory. It's applicable to everyone. It makes you go faster and do lots of damage. However, the try slash and the heal on herself, the try slash in particular, actually, a lot of the time it was used to temporarily tank some damage. Sometimes it even actually let you run like one tank. And what I mean by that is that say you're reversing a team comp that is predominantly physical, except on the end, there is a Kyoka. Just something like this, for example. I don't know if this really exists, but like something like this. Your first instinct would be like, well, I should run a Miyako, but then you see there's a freaking Monica and a Kyoka. Monica and Kyoka are pretty much a Miyako killing combo. However, what you could do is that you could actually run a Miyako as well as Tamaki and a Kokoro. And why do you do this? Because if you can stall long enough for the Tamaki to kill the Kyoka, with Kokoro coming out with the tri slash and taking some damage and then coming back and healing up, that's it. That's game over. If you've dealt with the Kyoka and you have a Miyako, like I don't think these guys are getting through the Miyako. There is most definitely a chance since it's dodge RNG, but like you are in such a better position. Obviously guys, this is an example. I don't even know if like anyone runs this kind of comp, but yeah, you guys can see like where I'm trying to go with this Kokoro tri slash utility. And back to summer Kokoro, she just doesn't have that. She is kind of almost like just solely a damage kind of support, which is not bad because if she is really good at that, then that just makes her like a specialized, perfectly good CB unit. And that's okay. We just use her in CB then. The other thing I wanted to talk about is also the New Year's and uh, Princess Kokoro. So for you guys who don't know, Princess Kokoro is actually one of like the best units in the game even now. And you are definitely going to want to get the bond level bonuses for the summer initial and new year variants. However, if you guys did see my last video, which was about the summer is here or like the summer event with the new very hard stage, there is a chance that a lot of you are not going to be able to get the three star summer Kokoro. You guys might fall short just a little bit. And what I would recommend highly is that if it is not too much, then I would say divine amulet it. It's going to be a very, very long time before we're able to actually farm for the summer Kokoro shards. Not until the event reruns or if it gets added to like an event compendium. And so I would say for summer Kokoro, three stars at least guys, especially because it's going to give her some level of survivability against the bosses that we're about to go up against in clan battle. Actually, with that being said, let's circle back to summer Pekrin and you know, what should I star her at? Now, this is an interesting one. So I think if you are low on DAs and divine amulets, you probably shouldn't star summer Pekrin, especially because summer Kiaru is coming. With that being said though, what's interesting is that some team comms actually require summer Kiaru to be at three stars. However, again, if you're not running like really hardcore Chinese comps, just five star slam that summer Kiaru. Summer Kiaru is just so much more like long lasting, a longer shelf life than like summer Pekrin. Roll summer Pekrin for the waifu, but you can also star her up because she's waifu, but like from a, I guess, efficiency point of view, I would say spend your divine amulets on summer Kiaru. All right, guys, to be honest, I think that's kind of it. Let me give you guys a quick summary. This is summer Pekrin. She is predominantly kind of like a cleave character. Most of her strengths actually comes from her UB. So we're looking at the physical damage to all in 600 range. And as such, you guys should be looking for synergies around that. So I'm talking Yukari, Saren, Yuki, as well as Lima, as you know, because Lima is dragging all of the enemy units towards you. She is not that good at clan battle. And honestly, if I could help her, I would not take her. Over to Summer Kokoro. Summer Kokoro is a great clan battle unit. Try to get her to at least three stars and you should be good to go. Honestly, even running her in order is crazy because like, look at all of those buffs. Because of the uptime of all of these skills, the debuffs and the buffs, like she can be so good, even just on auto. However, when it comes to arena side, like she is not that good. So I do not advise using her for arena. Maybe if you're running like a physical defense shred team, then you could definitely consider her. However, for the most part, I think she should just stay in clan battle where she really thrives. All right, let's wrap it up because I think that was a pretty great summary, to be honest. Maybe next time I should just make these summaries and just like turn these into one minute videos. I don't know. Okay, okay. I'm gonna stop rambling and let's wrap up the video. Guys, secret message, fun in the sun. It's the first thing I thought of when I looked at this picture. Look at those sun rays coming down. So if you guys could drop that secret message down in the comments below, I would really appreciate that. It just lets me know that you guys have made it to the end of the video and I really, really appreciate that. I put a lot of time and effort into these videos and I think you guys can see that. But with that being said, as always, if this video was kind of helpful or you guys kind of found it entertaining, consider a like, a sub, a follow, a sub. Did I already say that? But again, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.